Good morning, children. Welcome to session. Good morning. Good morning, W Beta. Good morning, Pooja. Good morning. How are you guys? How are you? How are you guys? Good to see a lot of smileys and all in chat box. Okay, children. Yes. So, you know, in last session, uh, we were discussing about animal kingdom, right? Yes. So, in uh, last session, we completed till mollusk, right? Mollusk we completed. And in today's session, we are going to continue from the next phylum, okay? Yes. So, mostly today, we are uh, trying to complete this chapter, children, okay? In between, if you have any doubts, you need any clarification, please do let me know through, uh, let me know through your chat box. Yes, uh, I'm fine, but I'm fine. I'm really doing good. Thank you for asking, okay? Yes. So without wasting much time, let us start the chapter. Children, before I start this, uh, you know, session, again, I would like to remind you, please open your NCRT textbook okay and follow whatever i'm explaining okay and you know just you know follow ncrt don't deviate from ncrt and in ncrt also just stick the important you know features because half of the characteristics of each phylum you learned already in the flow chart right in addition to that flow chart the classification table was there no you remember yes so in addition to that whatever you you want to know in extra focus on that okay i'll be stressing only on those points today is it clear children is it clear thumbs up okay great so now let us start now let us start with new phylum that is echinodermata right so in your short form in your you know uh, abbreviations of phylum in, in your abbreviations of phylum what was your abbreviation of phylum it was p a it was p c square p a a cube Mahek, right? It was P A square P A cube Mahek. Okay. Yes. So in this, thank you so much, guys, for your response. We completed P C square and P A cube. We completed M. We are going for Echinodermata E. Okay. Yes. So let us study. What is Echinodermata, the meaning of the meaning of the word. Okay. Echino. Echino means what, children? Spiny. Okay. Echino means what? Spines. Spines on the body. Okay. Dermata. Derma means skin, right? Derma means what? Skin. Yeah. So derma means skin or layer right derma echino means spines spiny so the animals with spiny skin or spiny body are called echinodermata children okay and you know these animals these echinodermata animals are purely marine and they are having organ system level of organization organ system level of organization children okay and one more thing you should remember see like how we have endoskeleton right we have endoskeleton endo means inside right endo means what endo means inside okay so we have endoskeleton we have skeleton inside a body right same with these echinodermata also have endoskeleton which is made of calcareous Ocils. Ocils are nothing but bone-like structures, okay, made of calcium. That means the endoskeleton of echinodermata is made of calcium substance. Is it clear, children? Okay. So, very, very, very important, you know, uh, point, coming to the important point. When it comes to symmetry of echinodermata, children, symmetry of echinodermata, this is very important and most of the times it's asked, it's been asked in your board as well as, you know, uh, the competitive exam, okay? Radial symmetry, see, 
the adult the adult echinodermatous say for example if you take an example starfish starfish is a echinodermata right the adult echinodermata are radial in symmetry children radial in symmetry the adult are radial in symmetry but the larvae the larvae larvae just looks like this no so it is bilateral in symmetry so remember adult koi baat nahi beta i am just uh, uh, just make just to make the uh, concept very easier i am just focusing on very important point just remember these points from this file am okay w yes see file uh, in echinodermata symmetry is very important adult starfish i select you know starfish aapke palm jaise lagte hai star jaise lagte hai jo adult hai wo radial hota hai but jo larvae stage mein hota hai na echinodermata i repeat they are in bilateral symmetry okay this is very 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 important point you you are supposed to remember okay this is a twist and you know all these echinodermata are triploblastic and coelomate and starfish okay typical example for echinodermata is a starfish right yes just imagine starfish whenever you um, uh, think about echinodermata and when it comes to digestive system of echinodermata yes it is complete digestive system is complete because if you imagine a starfish like this okay this is starfish no yeah on the lower side here okay if if you if you consider this this is lower side this is upper side okay on the lower side on the lower side of the starfish echinodermata it is having mouth and on the upper side upper side back side dorsal side it is having very good it is having it is having anus so on the ventral side it is having mouth and on the dorsal side it is having anus now see mouth and anus both are present so it is a complete digestive system right children echinodermata having complete digestive system okay yes so let us see what is there in next slide and another important feature of echinodermata is you know water vascular system water vascular system so from even you about this word no water vascular system what is water vascular system you can see the cross section of echinodermata here if you take cross section can you see this is a central canal okay this is a central canal the radial canal the radial canal this is radial canal okay and this is anus it, the the this is you know do, dorsal side and the ventral side you have mouth through which water enters and it passes through these radial canals can you see here the radial canals these are radial canals okay so in in the radial canals you have you know tube feet can you see here tube feet like structure so water will get fill in this water will get fill in this okay as water as water enters these water canal you can see water will carry prey's food right yes that food will be digested by digestive glands in that water canal okay as a result the food will be absorbed into the cells and now the water which has entered the water water canal okay the central water canal then pass through all the arms of the starfish or echinodermata and enters the tube feet and leaves the body of this animal through tube feet okay so water leaves through tube feet so it enters through it enters through madreporite can you see here madreporite the water enters echinodermata through an opening called madreporite and then it circulates to all the water canals and in the water canals you have tube can you see tubes bird like structure which are arranged in row yes so it passes through tube feeds we you have digestive glands you have digestive glands so the digestive glands will secrete some digestive enzymes which will break the food particles in water and those food particles will be absorbed into the animal body okay and the water which has entered the tube feed will then come out of the 
animal body. So through tube feet, water will come out. That means your water will enter through mitochondria, passes through all limb, uh, you know, uh, limbs, and then enters the tube feet and comes out through tube feet. Okay. Yes. So there is no special, you know, movement. Uh, uh, like there is no special structures for locomotion, and there is no special structures for respiration. There is no special structures for excretion because water canal system plays all these roles. So water vascular system, water vascular system does all these function of locomotion, you know, respiration and all. How it helps in locomotion? See, when water fills in the tube feet, it gives it gives some turgidity. Okay, so with the help uh you know with that water pressure animal moves like this okay yes so water vascular system is very 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 important yes beta you are right you are right w water vascular system is a unique feature of echinodermata okay yes so let's go to next slide what is that for you in next slide okay Yes, when it comes to, you know, uh, sexual uh, reproduction and all, in case of echinodermata, sexes are separate. Sex, sexes are separate means what? They, they have both, they have male echinodermata and female separate body, right? And reproduction is sexual and fertilization is external. That means male gamete will be released into water from male animal. Female gamete will be released into water from female animal. And then fertilization takes place. And as you know, you have larva of bilateral symmetry. That means development will be indirect okay yes example asteria starfish echinus sea cucumber antidone ophiria brittle star okay so these are examples of you know echinodermata children so you need to remember a few examples here okay yes very good so let us go to next slide what is that for you any doubts in echinodermata children i hope it's clear it's pretty clear for you guys Okay, thank you. So now another uh, phylum, the last phylum, almost okay, we came to an end, right? Uh, hemichordata, mahek. Yes. So last but first uh, phylum, last but one uh, phylum. Okay. So now hemichordata children, hemichordata. Please, uh, you know, I understand what's your concern and all. Okay. In hemichordata, you need not to uh, break your head, okay? You just remember, they are exclusively marine animals, okay? And they have organ system level of uh, organization. The symmetry is bilateral, triploblastic, and coelomates because they're highly evolved animals, right? Yes. And here it comes, the body of the animal, the body of the animal is divided into, okay? See the body in your NCRT textbook, it, it's like this, right? Yeah. They are round worms. Okay. Body is divided into anterior part. Anterior part is called proboscis. Anterior part is called proboscis. Okay. In the middle, you have a collar. Okay. In your, just look at your NCRT textbook here in the middle part. Okay. So this part is collar. And this remaining, the rest of the part is a trunk, which is very long, long trunk. So you need to remember these three. The body of hemichordata divided into proboscis, collar, and long trunk. Very important, they are exclusively marine animals, children. They are exclusively marine animals, okay? So you need to remember these two points from the the slide okay yes when it comes to when it comes to circulatory system it is open circulatory system you remember you remember open circulatory system yes hemichordata arthropoda some mollusca you remember i have uh, given a mnemonic for you right harm yes so a jo circulatory system hota hai na hemichordata mein wo open system hai bachcho open system okay and as they are marine means living in water <coughs> sorry so they should have gills for respiration right yes and proboscis you know in in the body 
anterior part and then proboscis, uh, sorry, anterior uh, part and then collar and then trunk, right? Yes. So in this body, we have a gland called proboscis gland. And this proboscis gland is mean for excretion. Like in platyhelminthes, we have flame cells, right? And in ascalminthes, we have, um, what we have? We have excretory pore. The same way, in case of hemicordata, the proboscis gland is responsible for excretion. Okay, yes. So when it comes to sexes, the sexes of these hemicordata separate. That means you have male and female animals separate. And fertilization is external. <coughs> very good, very good, W beta. Hemicordata, open circulatory system. Arthropoda also open circulatory system. And development is indirect. That means you have some larva stage. Okay, yes. There are two examples given in your... Um, NCRT. So they, they generally ask in, you know, uh, competitive exam, given some uh, examples and tell them, uh, you, they may ask you to identify the uh, hemicordate uh, animals. See, whenever the word ends with glosses, glosses, ang ban karke bol do, a hemicordate example, hai na? Baleno glosses, psycho, glosses, glosses. Whenever you hear the word glosses, okay, TK, a hemicordate. Take care, bacho. Take care. In a hemicordata, you need to remember they are exclusively marine. Okay. And you know the, uh, the body parts, three parts. And excretory structure is very, very important. Proboscis. This word is very, 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 very important. Proboscis word. And two examples. Balenoglossus, psychoglossus. Only, only, only these three points are very important in hemicordata. Okay, children? Yes, thank you so much for your response, W beta. Guys, keep on responding, keep on interacting in a panel, okay, such that I will understand what's going and how much you're understanding. Is it clear, Pooja? Pooja, are you there? Okay. Yes, children, now we are discussing new phylum, the last phylum of animal kingdom, right? Yes, that is core data children you remember this picture you remember this picture of notochord we discussed this in first session right do you remember notochord yes you remember notochord is a rod like structure arising from mesoderm of the embryos right yes so the animals with these notochord are called core data right they are called Chordata. The animals which are having notochord are called chordata. And these animals, these animals on the dorsal side, can you see the dorsal side? This is dorsal side. So dorsal means back. You remember D, dorsal. If you ulta kar, e, aap isko ulta karenge to B. B stands for back. Yes. So a chordata may jo backside, dorsal side hota hai, a nerve, they are having nerve cord, okay? So chordata are having nerve cord on the dorsal side. Chordata may nerve cord ka pe hai? Backside. Dorsal side pe hai na? Yes. And you remember, and you know, this nerve cord is yes, very good children. Very good for your response. Uh, you're really doing great. Yes. Nerve cord is hollow. Hollow means it's just like a pipe in the space middle. Can you look at the diagram? This is hollow space, right? Yes. And these, these uh, chordata at the embryo stage, at least at the embryo stage, they are having gill slits. Can you see here? Gill slits. Gill slits. Okay. So these are important characteristics of chordata. They are having notochord, okay, which is derived from mesoderm. And on the back side, dorsal side, they're having hollow nerve cord. And in addition, they're having gill slits. They are having gill slits. Okay. Yes, children. And you know, they must be triploblastic, right? Because they are highly evolved and they are coelomates and definitely they are bilateral symmetrical. And you know, organ system level of organization, you have digestive system, organ system, circulatory system, excretory system. Yes. 
okay so and when it comes to another important you know uh, uh feature they have post anal tail anal tail see post anal tail okay these chordata have post anal tail and the circulatory system of chordata is closed right yes we all comes under phylum chordata children and you know this chordata animals are having notochord and the animals without notochord are called non chordates that means from porifera to hemichordata whatever you discuss discuss no the phylums just before chordates were non chordates okay yes so let us study some uh, you know uh, important differences between chordates and non chordates children this may be for your board point of view uh, sometimes the, it may be for two marks where you need to write two points under each uh, chordate and non chordate or if they ask you for five marks you need to write five points under each of the category okay yes hello geetanjali how are you beta okay any doubts just let me know in qa panel okay yes so let us do it quickly chordates you know obviously chordates should have notochord right so this is this table is there in your ncert children this table is there in ncert okay yes non chordate definitely notochord is absent okay and you know you know central nervous system is dorsal we have spinal cord we are chordates right yes we have a central nervous system where is our central nervous system the brain and the spinal cord spinal cord is dorsal right back side can you can you see my uh, back yeah they are back side and it's hollow you know the spinal cord in the middle it's hollow and it's single yes obviously you have single spinal cord right yes but in case of non chordata it is ventral means front do you remember from your annelida it is having ventral nerve cord right yes it is on the front side and it was solid it is not hollow it is solid and it is double do, do you remember in annelida you uh, you saw the nerve cords in double like, like rail track right yes and chordates are having gill slits whereas in non chordates gill slits are absent okay and say chordates we human we have heart in the front side or back side we have heart in the front side that is ventral whereas whereas in case of non chordates heart is in dorsal generally they are not having heart because most of the heart is an organ right organ so it's a part of organ system so most of the uh, you know non chordates were uh, like below organ system organization so if by chance heart is present in that phylum then the heart will be in dorsal side okay and post anal part that is tail tail is nothing but post anal part is present whereas in non chordates post anal tail is absent children see these are some of the important differences among chordate and the non chordate solid and double kya hota hai but uh, beta just uh, try to remember from your annelida okay i have shown your diagram of a nervous system right it was having a brain here and transverse nerve this is lateral nerve can you see two cords are running two cords are running double okay and these are not hollow hollow they are not hollow they are not like pipe they are like iron rod filled one that is solid okay hollow and solid we have hollow spinal cord ke beech mein hamare beech mein aise hollow space hai na yeah that's it clear the blue beta okay shall i go to next slide yes this in this slide you need to remember some two to three points okay don't get scared looking at the slide and information yes i am telling you the phylum chordata is divided into three sub phyla namely euro chordata also called tunicata this is very 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 primitive primitive chordata phylum cephalo chordata and vertebrata okay yes so the sub phyla euro chordata or tunicata and cephalo chordata are proto chordate proto means what children primitive these are primitive primitive proto chordates 
tunicate and cephalocordate are primitive chordates and you see these animals only in marine not on land not on fresh water okay so you remember urochordata also called tunicata and cephalocordata these two subphyla these two chordates are very primitive and you get only in marine only in marine and here comes one more important point you please if you have a pen or marker mark in your ncrt book urochordata in case of urochordata you get to see notochord only in the tail of the larva once it become adult no that notochord will disappear and when you see that notochord only in the larval stage that too in the tail okay see in urochordata if you assume this is larva of the urochordata okay you get to see the notochord only in the larval tail larval tail okay once this larvae become adult once this larvae become adult you don't see the tail okay in adult this is adult animal imagine if this is an adult okay in adult there is no notochord okay yes this is about urochordata and in cephalochordata children in cephalochordata in cephalochordata if you consider this as an example of cephalochordata just i'm drawing you know some worm like animal structure just to make it understand this is head part and this is tail part okay this is head part and this is tail part okay notochord notochord is present from i am taking the blue color to represent notochord here notochord is present a rod like structure is present from head to tail head to tail and it is present throughout the life and it is present in throughout the life of the cephalocordata hence the name cephalo cephalo means head children cephalo head okay chordata they are having notochord from head to tail cephalocordata and it is throughout the life the best example for urochordata is you know acidia sulpa doliolum acidia sulpa doliolum okay cephalocordata example bronchiostoma also called lancelet or amphioxus is it clear children is it clear so here you need to remember chordate can be divided into three subphyla whereas urochordata and cephalochordata primitive and you get to see only in marine whereas you know when it comes to notochord in case of tunicata that is urochordata you get get to see notochord only in the tail of larva stage and it disappears in adult whereas in cephalochordata the notochord extends from head to tail and it persists throughout the life is it children children is it clear yes now the another subphyla of chordata we left it right that is vertebrata in case of vertebrata you get to see notochord only in embryonic period after embryonic period once the fetus develops and baby delivers that notochord will be replaced by either cartilage or made of bony vertebral column so in case of adults or after embryonic period or after development of fetus the notochord in the embryonic uh, stage will be replaced by vertebral column in the adult and in this uh, this vertebral column in some of the animals may be made of cartilage or in some it may be made of bones is it clear children is it clear very good crystal clear distal water clear right okay now this line is very important for your board point of view they may ask you thus sorry were all vertebrates are chordates but all chordates are not vertebrates justify justify see all vertebrates are chordate see you know all vertebrates are having notochord at some point of their life span right do you agree all vertebrates are chordates that means all vertebral animals are having cord notochord notochord at embryonic stage yes but now tell me all chordates all chordate means 
urochordata cephalochordata right so now tell me you urochordata and cephalochordata having any vertebral column no they are having only they are having only notochord so that's why all vertebrates are chordates because all vertebrates are having notochord but not all chordates are vertebrates because urochordata and cephalochordata are not having vertebral columns is it clear children this point is this point is clear children is it crystal clear or distilled water clear or is still a muddy water <laughs> okay thank you for your response guys thank you so much okay so let's not waste time just look at this uh, chat quickly okay look at this chat quickly i'm going to give you some uh, tricks here to remember the names okay vertebrata the sub phylum vertebrata under chordata is divided into division namely agnatha gnathostomata agnatha gnathostomata how to remember agnatha agnatha is a you know sanskrit word right children agnatha it sounds like sanskrit agnat agnatha means you know jo ata pata nahi ho na agnat yes agnatha lacks jaw some of the vertebral animals they don't have jaw see jaw means what this is lower jaw this is upper jaw no yes so those animals which do not have jaw are agnatha division and it has only one class cyclostomata stomata cyclo means ring like stomata means opening round opening they are having round opening of the mouth cyclostomata okay whereas the animals which has you know jaws are called gnathostomata they can be divided into pieces fishes which are having fins piece fin okay fishes fins and the tetrapoda tetra means four poda means limbs okay tetrapoda four limbs so now under pieces you have two classes namely chondroptis and osteoptis osteoptis means osteo children bone right osteoptis bony bony very good gitanjali chondro you know cartilage is made of chondrocytes chondrin you remember the word chondrin chondrocytes are made of chondrin material yes so cartilage chondrocytes are also called cartilaginous fish osteoptis also called bony fishes okay yes under pieces you have two classes chondrocytes and osteoptis don't worry i'll be giving simple comparison table for these two classes okay yes next coming to tetrapoda means which are having four limbs you can make an abbreviation here aram aram se pad lo beta aram se first if for amphibia reptilia apes mammals aram se remember <laughs> is it clear how to remember tetrapoda class aram se yes a amphibians reptiles apes mammals okay let's start with you know cyclostomata cyclostomata is jawless animal you need to remember that one only one of the class is jawless okay cyclostomata you can see here they are not having jaw right and see very important point of cyclostomata they are jawless circular mouth as they don't have jaw they are having circular mouth right yes so now they are ectoparasites see what is ectoparasite ecto means outside right ecto means what outside 
so they live on the surface or body of other fishes in water they are exclusively marine water animals they are aquatic animals you know yes and they are ectoparasite remember they are jawless animals they are ectoparasites they just live on the surface of other fishes and you can see here these animals are having you know gill slits can you see the gill slits here yes so they range up to six, six to 15, six to 15 pairs of gill slits are present and they help in respiration for this animal, okay? And you know, as they don't have jaw, just like circular mouth, like this, you know? So they, they use the circular mouth for sucking from the animals on which they are living. <coughs> <coughs> Is it clear, children? Okay. And their body is devoid of scales. See, if you look at any uh, fishes and all living in water, they are having fish uh, scales. But you can see here, the body is very smooth. They don't have scales. See, they don't have scales. They don't have scales on their body. And see, when you look at the fins, can you see paired fins? No. Fins are there, but they're not in pair. If, if paired fins means they should be here also, right? In a pair. No. So, fins are there, but they are not in pair children. Okay. So, the best example for cyclostromata is petromyzon. Re remember, petroleum, petro, petromyzon. Okay. Yes, cyclostoma. Whenever you hear the cyclostoma, look at the word cyclo, round mouth. So, when you have round mouth, you, you don't have a chance for jaw, right? Yes, they are jawless animals. As as imagine as they don't have jaw. So imagine if you don't have upper and lower jaw, you cannot chew, right? You cannot chew. So that time you 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 need to suck the food. So sucking food means you need to, you know, take it from other animal. That means it should be a parasite. So this cyclostomato class is ectoparasite class and they live on other fishes. Is it clear, children? Any doubts here? No. Great. See, the central nervous system, the cranium, the head part, the skull part, and vertebral column are made of cartilage, and circulation is closed type. And whatever I have highlighted here, you need to underline in your NCRT also, children. See, cyclostome, cyclostome, they are, they are marine. They live on other fishes, right? In marine, marine means sea water, salt water. Yes. Whenever they want to breed, that breeding process is called spawning. Whenever there is a breeding season, what they do, they migrate from marine water to fresh water children. They migrate from marine water to fresh water. Why? You know, in marine water, salt content will be very high. So the larvae will not survive in marine. That's why to make the larvae survive, what they do, they come to fresh water and they do fertilization, they, they, they do deliver every baby and all. So they now larvae are formed. After spawning, after you know reproduction, these adult animals will die. See how they are sacrificing themselves because of that, you know. Uh, lack of salt and all, they die, they die. So now what left with? They left with larva. Now the larvae undergo metamorphosis. Ma metamorphosis means transformation from larvae to adult. Larvae to adult. So once they become adult, they go back to ocean. So larvae doesn't go back to uh, larvae. Don't go back to ocean or marine water because there will be very high salt content, right? They they will die. So in fresh water only they they get adult. Once they get adult, immediately they start moving towards the oceans. Is it clear, children? No, beta. It's reproduction health. Next chapter we are uh, discussing about reproduction health. Okay. Yes. Yes, children. Any doubts here in this line? This is very important line. Just under, uh, underline. Okay. Best example, you know, petromyzon, also called lamp, lamp prey, lamp, lamp, you know, lamp prey, mixin, also called hackfish. You can remember as hugfish. Okay. Mixin or hackfish. Okay, children. So this is about uh, cyclostomata, the only jawless. Uh, 
animal of the jawless class of vertebrata right yes so now we started with we started with pisces pisces yes in pisces you remember quadruptis was the one of the class and osteoptis one of the class right yes so instead of discussing different uh, in slides i'm taking uh, it in one slide because in most of the times in exams they ask you to write the difference between chondroptis and osteoptis so that's why i uh, tried to get it in one slide and it will be very easy for you to remember as well okay when it comes to endoskeleton in chondroptis it is made of cartilaginous hence the name cartilaginous fish whereas osteoptis the cartilage uh, the endoskeleton is made of bones hence the name osti osti means bone bony fishes okay this is first point second point compared to osteo osteoptis chondroptis are bigger in size children they are bigger big fishes they are big fishes okay whereas osteoptis are small fishes compared to chondroptis and if you look at the mouth position in cartilaginous fish mouth is ventral ventral means like this if you imagine a fish okay mouth will be in ventral side see so mouth mouth is in ventral side okay yes in case of osteoptis mouth is terminal terminal mouth children see this is a fish okay mouth is terminal mouth is terminal okay in case of osteoptis mouth is terminal whereas in case of chondroptis mouth is ventral and you know in case of chondroptis placoid type of scales are present placoid 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 means what pointed okay whereas in case of osteoptis scales are generally absent if present also they are cycloid cycle cyclic like this cycloid scales here placoid pointed scales clear children yes so in case of chondroptis gill slits are present gill slits five to seven pair see five to seven pairs gill slits are present and they don't cover by any of the operculum operculum means a protective layer okay so they don't cover by protective layer but in case of you know osteoptis four pairs of gill slits are present and the gill slit is covered by protective layer called operculum operculum okay yes caudal fin caudal fin caudal fin this is caudal fin right yes it is heterocircle heterocircle means you can see it is in you know like this two different uh, portion but here homocircle up and down top so it will be in uniform size and shape okay and in chondroptis the excretion is you know excretory material is urea they excrete in the form of urea but osteoptis ammonia okay so one more important one more important characteristics children these chondroptis these chondroptis okay they lack they lack air bladder they do not have air bladder or air sac that's why they need to swim continuously if they stop swimming no they go and sunk to the bottom that's why they need to sunk continuously but in case of osteoptis you know air bladder is present what is present air bladder is present as air bladder is present it will fill with air no so it help in buoyancy it keeps on floating easily so they need not to swim continuously to keep them floating on the water okay is it clear children is it clear this is also very important character one of the important feature chondroptis do not have air bladder that's why they sunk if they stop swimming 
okay in case of bony fishes they have air bladders so they need not to swim continuously to keep them beyond or floating they they, they do a uh, float even though they don't swim is it clear children any doubts here in chondroctites and osteoctites characteristic features of chondroctites and osteoctites any doubts yes so these are some of the examples see on the left hand side whatever you are saying are all cartilaginous fishes and right hand side bony fishes okay you can see the ray fish okay smooth hound shark gun okay dog fish so these are all these are all cartilaginous fishes and children you know some of the cartilaginous fishes like ray fish they have sting they have they have you know a uh, sting fishes either they produce some of these cartilaginous uh, fish they produce electric shock you know you might have heard many uh, uh, animal uh, discovery and all the the one who uh, you know make documentary videos and also they they were very uh, facing very dangerous situation right sometimes you might have read in articles and papers electric shock or they may release some poison they may sting poison they may sting poison right oh just a minute children just a minute Yeah, so they, they either they give electric, you know, shock or they may sting poison, they may release poison children, they may release poison. So this is one of the protective nature, this is one of the protective strategy used by, used by cartilaginous fishes, used by cartilaginous fishes. Is it clear children? They have some, you know, protective uh measures like you know uh, whenever some enemy comes to them they they just you know give electric shock okay or they just sting it and they may give some poison attack for the enemies so it is protective in nature yeah when it comes to bony fishes you can see salmon herring goldfish sea Green codfish, okay, rainbow type. So these are all some of the best examples for bony fishes. Children, you can see operculum here, gill slits, okay, gill slits. If you observe these, you know, the fishes in live, okay, so they will be having operculum here, a protective layer, layer covered by a uh, layer, protective layer, gill slits, okay. Yes. So let us go to next. Any doubts in this fishes? Chondroctites class and osteoctites class, children. Chondroctites and osteoctites. No, right? Okay. So now we are coming to superclass tetrapoda. Under tetrapoda is aram, right? Under tetrapoda is aram. Amphibian, reptile, aves, mammals. Very good. So amphibia. Let us take first with amphibia. What are amphibians? water amphibians can i have your response quickly come on guys amphibia beta elephant is a fish cool hota hai the blue tell me elephant is a fish cool hota hai Yes, amphibia. Amphibia means the, they live in water as well as on land, right? Hence, they're called amphibians. Amphi means dual. Amphi means what? Amphi means both, right? Yes, amphi means both. So they live in they live in water and they also can live on land. 
Is it clear, children? Yes. So when you look at the amphibians, see the frog, okay? This is salamander, okay? Yes. When you look at any of the amphibian, slide Okay, just me, uh, let me pause here, okay? Let's go to our the blue slide. Which one, beta? Left side, pe hai, right side, pe hai. A. Skate. This is not elephant, beta, a ray fish. Bada wala friends hota hai na. O ray fish hai, elephant nahi hai. E in ka tail hai. This is tail part, beta. This is tail. A fins hai. Is it clear? This one only, beta. Yeah. It's called skate. Clear? Yes, 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 Pooja, you are right. He's talking about rayfish. <laughs> okay. So, shall we go to our slide? Ha, Pooja, yes, exactly. Okay. So, amphibians. See, whenever you look at amphibian, bilkul W beta, apne sahi absorb kiya hai. Very good. <laughs> okay. Now, shall we start with amphibians? Shall we continue? Shall we continue? Chil continue, children. The blue. Okay. Peek. Dek lo. Ab koi bhi amphibian ko dek lo. A frog, a salamander. Okay. Iska jo body hota hai na, body will be divisible into head and trunk. Head and trunk. Okay. In amphibia, you don't see neck, children. Okay. You don't see neck. You know, like, you know, I have read somewhere why these amphibians are not having neck. See, imagine frog. Frog always jumps like this, no? Whenever it jumps for long distance, imagine if it is having neck, it may break. It may get fractured. When it leap, when it leaps, it may fracture, right? So, like, you know, uh, why amphibians are not having neck. Okay. Yes. So when they take leave, there is a chance of fracture, right? Fracture ho sakta hai na? Right. That's why. So the body is divisible into head and trunk. Okay. And you know, whenever up, uh, you know, main deck ko kabhi touch kiya main deck, main deck ko kabhi touch kiya haath pe, nahi to koi baat nahi. Aaj shaam ko jab hi aap ek walk lete na, garden pe ya kai pe bhi, ek frog mila to just touch kar do. Okay. You feel it's very moist, watery. Why? Because it is having, you know, moist glands on its surface. And you, but it is very moist, but it's not having any scales. Scales like, you know, fishes. It's not having any scales, but still it is moisty. And look at the frog eyes. They're having eyelids, no? They're having eyelids. Yes. Frogs are having eyelids and frogs can hear beta frogs can hear what you are telling if you make some noise frog will jump and go away from you right yes frogs can hear and one frog can call another frog by creating some noise right yes so why because they have an internal ear see you cannot see this membrane just be behind the eyelid just behind the eyelid inner part of its body it is having a membrane called tympanum it is having a membrane called tympanum which act as ears see even inside our ear we have eardrum tympanic membrane right is the same way inside the frog there is a membrane just behind the eyes inside side inner side it's having a membrane called tympanic membrane which act as inner ear inner ear children inner ear in case of us it is external ear but here it is 
inner ear okay yes and very important very important you might have studied in your structural organization chapter where you studied cockroach frog earthworm and all right you know that already you know so in case of frog means amphibia alimentary canal is there no okay i'm drawing this is alimentary canal i will write it as ac okay uh this is urinary uh, urinary tract means kidney okay connection from kidney this is alimentary canal okay and reproductive system reproductive systems are here somewhere right yes so now all the reproductive system alimentary canal and excretory uh, urinary system opens into a common chamber this common chamber all opens into a common chamber called cloaca this is very important what is cloaca your alimentary canal and urination so the urine formed from kidney that is urinary system and reproductive system okay rs i am writing it as rs okay the reproductive system all are just merging into a same chamber same opening called cloaca that means if from alimentary canal if undigested food is going out as a feces it comes out through cloaca only if urine is coming out then it also comes out cloaca if the frog is releasing sperm okay if the frog is releasing egg if frog is releasing something from its reproductive system then it is also through cloaca only so cloaca is very important structure which into which the alimentary canal urinary system and reproductive tracts open is it clear children is it clear about cloaca any doubts about cloaca here any doubts about cloaca no right okay so when it comes to respiration in case of amphibians they are very super amazing respiratory system okay they are having they can respire through gills see frog lives in water then it lives in water and you know larvae of the frog lives in water it uses gills when it comes to land it uses lungs and moist skin for respiration so through gills through lungs through skin so by all these means amphibians can do respiration children okay so respiration in case of amphibians is very very important they use gills lungs and skin for respiration is it clear okay so now very important uh, point here yeah children aram a r a m aram right i'm giving you heart uh, clue related to heart okay i'm giving you i'm giving you clue to remember the number of chambers in heart of amphibians reptiles apes and mammals see mammals mammals we we have how many chambers in heart we have how many chambers in heart four chambers right right auricle left auricle right ventricle left ventricle so how many chambers we have four very good okay let us include p also param fishes in case of pisces two chamber auricle ventricle two chamber okay in case of amphibians in case of amphibians three chamber two auricles one ventricle children two auricles one ventricle so three chamber in case in case of amphibians it is three chamber yes in case of reptiles in case of reptiles okay few of most 
each of the reptiles having three chamber okay but there is an exception crocodile in case of crocodile you can see four chamber heart okay in crocodile it is four chamber exception in reptile this is very 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 important you can take this you know screenshot or you can write it down in your ncrt then aves four chamber four chamber see param pisces two chamber aram sorry amphibians three chamber reptiles three and four intermediate aves four mammals four you can remember this way you have five classes including fishes yes five digits two three three in the middle it is intermediate fewer three fewer four 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 you got this trick two three fishes two amphibians three reptiles three except crocodile four aves four mammals four is it clear children this trick you can remember this way no two three three four 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 two three three and four 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 see a jo panch hai na beach panch hai na ascending order two three beach mein ka jo middle one hai beach ka wo three and four dono hai is pe then four four is it clear children yes crocodile mein four hota hai that's why it's considered as you know connecting link between reptiles and aves in in terms of circulatory system okay yes coming back to uh, your amphibians okay heart is made of three chamber where you have two auricles and one ventricle two auricle and one ventricle okay and these animals are cold blooded animals cold blooded animals means poikilothermic another name for cold blooded poikilo poikilothermic that means they change their body temperature according to the external environment right they change their body temperature according to the external environment best example fishes fishes are poikilothermic amphibians are also poikilothermic okay and sexes are separate you know male frog is different female frog is different fertilization is external yes and they are oviparous oviparous means egg laying they are egg laying they are egg laying and development is you know indirect obviously you have tad no tadpole you have tadpole yes snake is also cold blooded i am coming to that point so best example for amphibia salamandra rana rana is nothing but indian frog before toad hyla tree frog ichthyopus ichthyopus is another important amphibian example because it is a limbless example limbless amphibian children okay yes so let us go to next uh, file next class amphibia okay then reptilia what is reptilia reptilia in latin language means crawl or to creep okay crawl or to creep hence the name reptiles okay the body is dry and is covered by dry and cornified skins children cornified cornified means you know uh, look at crocodiles yeah cornified look at crocodile look at the surface how it's it looks like you know some corn some you know or to say knots kind of thing are present on it so it's called corn okay and epidermal skewers or scales you can clearly make it out in snakes and all the epidermis will be having skewers and scale like structure right yes and in when it comes to ear tympanum is present tympanum inner ear is present okay limbs are present if limbs are present generally they are having two pairs means four limbs if not they are limbless okay yes best limbless reptile is snake heart is three chamber already you know but 
Crocodiles are having four chambered heart. And you know, children, reptiles are poikilothermic. See, fishes, amphibians, reptiles. Fishes, amphibian, reptiles are poikilothermic, means cold blooded animals. These three classes are cold blooded. That means they can change their body temperature to the surrounding environment. Okay, yes. And you know, Oh, right yes when you go right jungle and all you you get to see the you know the uh the shredded skin of snake long long uh shredded skin of snakes no it's nothing but skin cast okay the process is called skin casting clear children yes it is one of the important feature of reptiles skin cast is important feature of reptiles and Sexes are separate. That means you have male snake separate, female snake separate. Okay. Fertilization is internal. That means development, uh, fertilization takes place inside the female body and they are oviparous, egg laying animals. And development is direct. See, once the egg of snake hatched, baby snake will come out. There is no intermediate larval stage in all. No. So, direct development. Best example, your turtle tortoise, tree lizard, garden lizard, crocodiles, alligator, okay, wall lizard in your house, poisonous snakes like, you know, cobra, kite, viper, all snakes comes under reptiles children, okay? Yes, so this is all about, I wanted to tell you about reptiles. Next, another class, apes, okay? Let us not waste our time. Night, just another five minutes, children. Another five minutes. Please bear with me. Okay. Apes, you know, very important feature. They are having feathers. Okay. And some of the birds are fly more, means they can fly like a parrot, a sparrow. Okay. They are fly. And some birds are flightless, like ostrich and emu. They are having beak. The beak, you know, is modified according to the food they eat. Okay, and in case of apes, they are tetrapoda, that means four limbs, right? Whereas the four limbs are modified into wings, which help in flying, whereas hind limbs having scales on it. On the legs of the, you know, birds, if you absorb carefully, okay, if this is leg of any bird, if you absorb carefully, you get to see some scales in the legs, okay? Yes, so the hind limbs are having scales and they the hind limbs are mainly used for, you know, swimming, walking, clasping purposes. Skin is dry without any oil glands. But, but when it, when you look at the base of the tail, tail feather, okay, tail feather means what? Whenever you look at the bird, there will be tail feather. One feather will be extending like tail. You know? At the base of that feather, you get an oil gland. So oil gland at the base of tail feather is important characteristic feature. And you know, birds need to fly. That means they should be very light. That's why they have bones filled with air cavities. And such type of bones are called pneumatic bones. Pneumatic bones. Bones are, you know, filled with air. They are hollow. Birds are having hollow bones, which fill with air, which helps in flying, right? Yes, children. So next and they're warm blooded that means they maintain their internal temperature they don't change the temperature according to the environment just as we maintain see bahar you know barish ho rahi to cold ho to hamare temperature 37 hi hota hai andar ka 37 degree celsius hi hota hai na andar ka temperature body ka temperature the same way these birds also maintain in the body temperature okay and they do not change the temperature according to the surrounding environment hence they are called warm-blooded animals even mammals are home uh, warm-blooded animals and they are homeothermous punch minute but show book like a mujibi like a it's about career me mujibi book like a okay a a like one more uh five minutes okay Re reproduction sexes are 
separate you have cock and hen right see you need not to uh, remember this you just remember okay when it comes to aves males female you have separate because you have cock and hen peacock and peahen fertilization is internal internal and they are oviparous and once egg hatches the chick will be resembling hen so direct development examples you can give lot many birds example no ostrich peacock parrot penguin eagle vulture okay so now the last last part of this chapter that is mammals you know mammals are highly evolved animals that's why you get to see mammals in all habitats water desert land and all right yes the unique feature of these mammals you know are memory glands they are having placenta to nourish the babies when uh, the babies are inside the womb and once babies are delivered they are having memory glands for the nourishment and they have two pairs of limbs for walking running climbing and all and skin of mammals have hair this is another important character memory glands hair on skin and external ears pinna external ear is called pinna this is pinna okay this is one of, these three are important characteristics of mammals and other than these children to mention few mammals are warm blooded animals right mammals are warm blooded animals okay and they are having four chambered heart right they are having four chambered heart and they have highly developed organ system separate for separate each of the function Re like respiratory system digestive system circulatory system excretory system reproductive system like that they are having highly developed metabolic systems and organ systems to carry out their metabolism okay and when it comes to reproduction sexes are different okay sexes are different fertilization is internal and they are viviparous viviparous means giving birth to young ones children viviparous viviparous means what giving birth to young ones see giving birth to young ones cow give birth to calf tiger give birth to cub right yes so they are mainly viviparous development is direct once the baby is delivered it looks like adult uh, you know feature yes but there are few exception whereas ornithorhynchus platypus ornithorhynchus platypus is an oviparous mammal children it is an oviparous mammal okay yes so humans whale bat tiger cow dog cat what not examples you can get okay so all these are mammals is it clear children is it clear with this we completed this chapter and let us do some three four quiz questions okay let us see okay tell me answer for this question children living fossil of arthropoda type quickly living fossil of arthropoda living fossil in arthropoda quickly thank you so much for chocolate the blue yes so limulus limulus king crab is the living fossil very good living fossil of the arthropoda okay tell me which is the second is king crab good puja second largest phylum in animal kingdom second largest see first largest is arthropoda second largest is what which phylum very good very good puja limulus king crab also called limulus yes second largest phylum in animal kingdom children mollusca right soft bodied animals very good children chatting baat mein karna pehle answer dena okay 
Very good, Dablu. Molaska. Very good, Pooja. Okay. Digestive system in Ascalmanthus. Who is this? A R W shorts. Yes. <laughs> yes, beta. Molaska. Ascalmanthus. Digestive system. Is it complete or incomplete? I'm writing it's like this. Now you need to tell the answer. Is it complete or incomplete? Is it complete or incomplete? Complete, very good, very good. Excretory structures in platyhelminthus. Excretory structures in platyhelminthus. There are some special type of cells, no? Hey, who is telling incomplete? Children, it's complete. It's not incomplete. It's complete because ascalminthus are having mouth and anus. Yeah. Okay. Flame cells. Flame cells are the very good flame cells are the excretory cells very good puja flame cells another name for flame cells are solenocytes another name for flame cells solenocyte okay yes respiration in mollusk is by which organ Come on, come on, children, reply here. Respiration in mollusk is by which organ? Which structure? Option rakhenge to, yeah. Why I didn't get uh, kept option here do? Ab option se guess kar lete. I, I, I'm not getting whether you people revising and coming back or not that's why i just removed options if you are doing revision if you are remembering concept then only you can answer no options hoga to dekhe kuch bhi guess mar lete aap isliye yes so respiration by molars in case of molars respiration takes place with the help of feather gills right Feather kills. Okay. Yeah, neat me option hota hai, but exam ke tiyari ke liye aap better prepare hona chahiye, no? Like earlier I used to give you options, but now I'm uh, like since yesterday I'm not giving you options, okay? Because I just wanted to know which is the you know uh, correct answer. You should know these uh, keywords and answers without looking into options. Right? So that's why I'm giving direct question for you guys here. Especially for animal kingdom, I prefer this. Yes, beta. Pooja, yes, you're right. It's feather gills. Okay, children. Okay, with this, we completed, you know, uh, your animal kingdom chapter. I hope you enjoy the class and you, you got so many shortcuts to remember. Uh, wherever possible I, I had given shortcuts and tricks okay so with this we are uh, ending session here children and next uh, session will meet with another new chapter children if you have any doubt just let me know let me uh, know through the Q uh, qa panel and please 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 like the session share the session and please subscribe basidia okay and share the information share the uh, link and uh, sessions to your friends and the students who are in need of this okay thank you children bye we'll meet in next session okay bye oh to surprise